So recently, you might have seen clips of people screaming their lungs out at a new horror game on TikTok, Instagram, or whatever you use. That game is Lethal Company, a small indie game made by Zeekers, and for a small fee of 10 bucks, you get to experience that all for yourself. So yeah, I caved and bought it, and now I want to talk about it. So without further ado, let's get into it. In Lethal Company, you play as a scavenger and you travel to various moons in search of scrap that you can sell. Of course, it's not that easy though. While you search for things to grab, there are creatures around and they want to kill you. Well, most of them do anyway. Now, you might be thinking, what's stopping me from just grabbing one thing and leaving so I don't have to worry about the creatures? Well, first of all, you're a coward. And secondly, you have three days to meet a profit quota. You can only go to one moon per day, so you have to be smart about where you're going so you're sure that you're able to make enough to meet that profit quota. Uh, so yeah, grab three friends and start treasure hunting. Specifically three, by the way. The game becomes much harder the fewer people you've got. Don't even think about going solo. That is literally an impossible challenge, because if everyone in your crew dies, you lose all your stuff, meaning going alone is essentially a hardcore one. If you die, there's no chance you'll meet the quota. This all comes together to make a pretty satisfying gameplay loop. Though, the main appeal of this game is the proximity chat. They did that so well. Voices echo when outside. They get muffled when there's a wall in the way. Underwater. And of course they fade away as they get further away from you. It is actually really immersive. Also, the graphics of this game. At a first glance, it looks terrible, like, what is this? But it's secretly one of the most genius ways that an indie dev can handle this. You see, as you play, it's really hard to explain, but your brain sort of fills in the empty space and it seems realistic when you're immersed. It's like the pixels blurred together to make a smoother picture. It's really bizarre, and I think the only way you'd know what I mean is if you play the game. But combine this genius graphical style with the advanced proximity chat and actually pretty good sound design, and it's not too hard to get immersed into this world. Also, I love that the creatures all behave differently. They could have definitely made it so that every creature is exactly the same AI-wise, just moving towards you and if they touch you, they kill you, but they didn't. It helps make the vast majority of them feel less like evil monsters and more like different species trying to survive. Like some of them are always hostile and others will only attack you if you threaten them. Of course, there are a couple of actual monsters in the game as well. These even kill you in unique ways. But my point is, there's variety in the challenges you have to face, and that's just really nice. Now, the game is a horror game, but is the game scary? This is hard for me to answer. Well, objectively, obviously yes, it is scary. There are plenty of people getting absolutely terrified of this game. But for me personally, I never really found it to be that scary. I've had some tense moments in the game, sure. <laughs> but I feel like the creatures for the most part all rely on their visuals to scare you. And I mean, the creature designs are kind of creepy, sometimes, I guess, but most of the time I feel like they look way too over the top or like they don't go far enough in their design. Like there's this jester who's basically just a music box with arms and legs. Well, until the music box ends, in which case it pops up a skull then runs around killing people. There's also the spider. It's just a spider. Okay, yeah, I know to some people spiders are the worst thing they could see. The game has you covered, by the way. But unless you're one of those people with arachnophobia, you'll probably just see it as completely ordinary. I do like sneaking past it, though. They're not all bad, though. Some of the creatures are pretty creepy. I think my favorite is this guy here, the Bracken. He hides in the shadows and is a little unnerving when you spot him in the corner of your eye, and then he's just gone. I want more like this guy that make me question myself. Stuff like this is what I think is missing from the game right now. The game needs more horror audio, you know? What I mean by that is I want more red herrings that make me go, what's that, and huh, sounds that keep me on my toes. There are a couple sounds like that outside, like some falling rocks or some rustling leaves, for example, but for most of the game, you're inside a facility where there's really none of that, except the occasional door creak. Every sound is connected to something, which on one hand is great, it means you can have an advantage if you have a keen ear, but on the other hand, you quickly start making associations and it loses its scare factor. It becomes more of a game of connect the dots. Having sounds that are only there to muddy information is not a bad thing. It's a great way to build tension. This video by Scruffy goes into way more depth about what I mean. Yeah, the video is about FNAF, but its concept applies to all horror games. 
I'm also disappointed by the lack of variety in the facility interiors. Technically there is an infinite variety since they are all randomly generated, but I mean that they all have the exact same theme. Like once you're inside, your gameplay looks exactly the same as if you went to almost any other moon. Sure, the creatures that can spawn are determined by your current moon, but it all sort of blends together and makes it really hard to have memorable moments in specific locations. There is one exception though, and that's the moons with the mansions. That place is the only unique facility, but it's only found in the harder moons of the game, meaning you likely won't go there on your first playthrough since you have to pay credits to actually go there. I'm not asking for something extravagant like the mansions for the early game locations. I just want something new to explore when I go to a moon I haven't been to before, rather than knowing it will be the same theme as the previous moon I was on. I don't hold it against them though, since it's one person and the game is still in early development. I just hope they take the time to add some more themes to the existing locations later down the line. Anyways, that's all I really have to say about the main game. But now I want to talk about mods. The modding capabilities of this game are insane. It's almost a completely different game with mods. So if you're ever bored of the vanilla game, consider trying out some. There's a large variety to choose from, ranging from general gameplay improvements to new creatures that are genuinely so well made, to replacements that are, well, a little less intimidating. My favorite mod is probably this one. It adds a new enemy to the game, Skinwalkers. It disguises itself as one of you and will literally use your voice to lure your teammates to it. Oh, he's right there. He's right there. Oh, God, this way, this way. This creature is so cool. I want it in the vanilla game so badly. It's one of the only creatures that legit scare me. It takes advantage of the type of sound design I was talking about earlier, since now you have to pick apart if it's actually your teammate talking or not. This adds to the stress, since now the one sound that in almost all games means you're safe could mean you're in danger. I'll leave a link in the description below if you're interested in getting some mods. Just keep in mind that you can only play with other people with the exact same mods as you. So that's Lethal Company. I think it's a game with a lot of potential, and I definitely want to see more of this game in the future. I hope in like a year's time, it'll be even more fleshed out. It's already impressive to me what this guy was able to accomplish, and now that the game has blown up, he's probably got more of a budget from all the Steam purchases. So I hope he puts it to good use and makes this game something truly great. Anyways, that's all for me for now. If you like what you see here, consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.